Hello, my name is Tom Allen, and welcome to another video in the Invasive Species Series. A day out enjoying Michigan's great outdoors is hard to beat. Whether you're out on your boat, hiking on the trails, or taking your dog for a walk, any outdoor activity has the potential to spread invasive species. And now that you have a better understanding of how invasive species spread, we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to prevent the spread of invasive species. It's easier than you think. One of the best ways is to avoid coming in contact with them. When possible, travel on existing roads and paths and park on paved or non-vegetated areas. Another is planning ahead. Whether you're planning a vacation or coordinating worksite visits, do your best to visit non-infested sites first. It will reduce the chance of you introducing an invasive species. Of course, you may not always know where invasive species are, but as a general rule, high traffic places are more likely to have invasive species. For example, a lake with a boat launch in southeast Michigan has a higher probability of having invasive species than a remote lake in the Upper Peninsula. Using online tools such as the Midwest Invasive Species Information Network may help you determine where invasive species are known to occur. MISSIN has maps of where invasive species have been reported. But even with careful planning, avoiding exposure to invasive species is not always possible. During your adventures, your car or gear may get muddy, and if that's the case, it may have been exposed to invasive species that are difficult to see. Cleaning your gear is crucial, even if you don't think you've encountered an invasive species. Boats and trailers have numerous spots that can harbor aquatic invasive species. While this image is specific to boating, cargo trailers and transport trailers should also be inspected and cleaned. It is important to take the time to carefully inspect all vehicles, trailers, and gear. Physically removing foreign materials and draining any standing water goes a long way to ensure that no unwelcome guests are being transported. If your work or play involves heavy machinery, then this diagram may be helpful. There are many different types and models of heavy equipment, so please consider what parts may have come in contact with invasive species and check all the places that an invasive species could be hiding. An effective method for washing your gear is pressure washing. For terrestrial situations, cold water is fine, but for aquatic situations, heated water is necessary. Whether you're cleaning your boots or your boat, it's important to avoid letting the materials you remove go down a storm drain. Storm drains often lead into a lake or a stream. If possible, let your boat, trailer, or other water equipment dry in the sun for at least five days. While this is highly effective, it's not always an option. An alternative to air drying is to disinfect gear and equipment with a mild solution of water and bleach. Chlorine bleach is commercially labeled for use as a disinfectant and is widely available. The active ingredient in bleach is sodium hypochlorite. To effectively disinfect for invasive species, a target concentration of 500 parts per million bleach solution should be used. This table shows you how to properly dilute bleach to make this disinfectant. Please note that bleach can be corrosive to metal and rubber, so always refer to the manufacturer's directions for additional guidance. Another chemical disinfectant is Vircon Aquatic. This is a contact disinfectant in the hydrogen peroxide family. It is sold as a powder that you mix with water, and gear is either sprayed or soaked in it. It is 99.9% .9 biodegradable since it breaks down to water and oxygen. It is also non-corrosive at working dilution. Vircon Aquatic is used to kill bacteria and viruses. Therefore, it should not be considered effective against other invasive species, including invertebrates, plants, and animals. Vinegar dissolves zebra and quagga mussel veliger shells and should be used on sampling gear for zebra and quagga mussel analysis. Store in a cool, dry area away from incompatible materials, such as bleach. Table salt is an effective decontamination method for certain species and gear. For example, zebra and quagga mussel veligers are killed when gear is submerged in a salt solution. So you're probably asking yourself, how much decontamination is necessary? Risk is categorized into three levels, low, medium, and high. If you're not sure if you've come in contact with invasive species, then it is best to assume a medium risk level. If any one of the following criteria are met, then the risk for spreading invasive species from that site would be considered low. The proper decontamination for low risk sites is to inspect and remove any foreign materials found. If you'll be visiting multiple sites in a week, or you found an invasive species at a site, then the risk of spreading invasive species increases to medium. In addition to inspecting and physically removing foreign materials from vehicles and gear, at a medium risk site, you should also sanitize items through either pressure washing 
or chemical treatment. If your work or play bring you to multiple sites in a day or any of these other criteria are met, then there is a high risk for spreading invasive species. Decontaminating when leaving high risk sites is similar to medium risk sites, with the exception of the five days drying in the sun. To learn more about invasive species, please visit michigan.gov slash invasive species. The site provides information on invasive species specific to Michigan. There you can also learn about laws, permitting, grants, volunteer opportunities, and more. So remember, even if an invasive species is widespread, it doesn't mean that it's everywhere. So please take care to ensure that you're not moving invasive species. Thanks for watching.